What's up, AJ? Brain. What's happening? Nothing much, man. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. you happy to be home. <laughs> well, um, I mean, yeah, to some degree, only because uh the, for the sake of my dog's mental health, I've never had to I've never had to FaceTime a pet before just to get him just to try and snap him out of a <laughs> crippling depression. <laughs> but uh Wow. Uh but he the second we got home last night, he was like amazing. And yeah, man, uh Oh, it's good to be home. It's good to be back. But man, I will say uh, that was uh, the greatest vacation of all time. It was uh, VRAF. And uh, <laughs> it's it game I, cat as say, fuck. That's what it was. Yes, it was. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was an amazing trip. I can't wait to talk about it here shortly. Sweet. And uh, just a disclaimer. I'm operating at like 30% right now. So I'm going to do my best today. But uh, don't be surprised if I um, just uh, completely blank out a few times. <laughs> yeah, uh, same here. Definitely tired. Uh, but I do want to, I've been trying to hit the ground running. I got up today and been playing through some stuff. I want to get some some videos out. We got some, I got some editing to do on things that uh, we filmed while we were at PAX. Uh, so bear with us and just, let's have a good time. You ready to start but the show? we're back, baby. Oh. It's time to go. Let's roll. That, Woo! Oh, no, that was like 130% AJ. <laughs> <laughs> that was too much. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> and now I'm going to collapse. <laughs> let's, let's go. This is PSVR Gamescast Live. We film live every single Monday, West Day, and Two Eyes Friday right here on YouTube. We do it live at 6 p.m. Eastern for your viewing pleasure. We also care about your oral pleasure, though. So our good friend, Rypop, puts us up on podcast services of your choice. Sirens on my end. My name is Brian Pop from this channel right here, PSVR Without Parole. This gentleman over here to my left, to your right, it's AJ from The Underground, PSVR Underground. I just looked to the right, and my neck... Uh, almost snapped. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts really bad. Uh, what is up, Brian? What is up, Game Cats? Happy Monday! We know that Mondays usually yeah. suck. Yes, it's true. <gasps> but we are here, Brian, to ensure it You're doesn't here. matter whether okay. we're like we can barely move or or talk or function or think. We are here, Brian, to ensure their Monday sucks mm -hmm. just a little less. Uh, can, can you turn your mic down like just a little bit from your side and I can turn it back <laughs> up from this side? Is, yeah. that, is that a thing? Yeah. Just, uh, the, nothing worked 20 minutes ago, you guys. So, uh, taking some stuff to PAX to film, uh, meant that my PC, uh, did not like it when, it, when equipment was removed and then brought back, uh, you get over there. Give me a check one, check two, AJ. Check one, check two. Let's go. Woohoo. There we go. I think maybe we can all agree that that's. That's nice and even now. Uh, let us gonna, know in the chat. I'm fake it till I make it today, Brian. <laughs> I'm just going to fake it. fake it all the way. End of time. And then, and then after the show, I'm just going to stand up and then take three steps and collapse onto the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, so you get back You get back last night, right? Yes. I got. Well, I got back this morning. Um, I got back at like uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. Oof. Okay. 2.11. 2.11. Yep. Got it. Mm-hmm. Um, why, why are you so beat up, AJ? Tell everybody why you're so goddamn tired. Because we just got done wrapping up the 2024 Game Cat meetup that took place in Boston, Massachusetts over. And, uh, we had everybody, uh, a tons of cats show up, developers that came out to see us. Um, as you guys know, man, like we wanted to do this meetup, uh, but we we knew it was going to be really challenging that that it was going to be really almost impossible to do it uh but thanks to all of your support of course we did like a you know we did a fundraiser or gofundme um and thanks to your support man we were able to make it happen and i wouldn't have been able to go without your help um and that goes for some of the crew all, the rest of the crew as well and uh i think i speak for 
uh, Miles and Wes as well, that I just want to say thank you guys so goddamn much. Um, you mean the world to us, and you continue to show why you are the number one community ever. You, it, and this trip, man, like, there's so much to talk about. There's a lot of stuff to unpack here, so we'll just kind of take it one thing at a time. But just from the bottom of our hearts, man, just want to thank everybody uh, who who you made this happen. And, you know, we, a lot of uh, our things that we accomplish are really owed a lot to the greatest community ever. The game got those. Uh, you guys are amazing, man. I love you. Yeah, man, I agree. I agree. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, get, getting everybody there was 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 a big deal, uh, and and we couldn't have done it without you guys. Um, but man, the experience of actually being there, as you guys know, that I was I was just absolutely um, panic stricken about having to leave my apartment. I just like hadn't. <laughs> really experienced big groups of people for a while and 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 for all of the things that i said i was going to do like i was going to prepare myself by like making sure i did this every day and went out every day and whatever time just got away from me and uh, it didn't happen and so by the time i got there it was like ripping the band-aid off man it was like it was like going from seeing nobody ever to seeing everybody like all the time uh and i i will say that um the group that showed up, there was probably 25, 25, 30. I don't, I don't know what it was. Man. It, was it was around, yeah, it was around 30 people total. It was a big group. It was a great group. Uh, and they were like, they were just like the fucking best people, man. Like they, they were very, very understanding and very chill and super just, you know, we we're all just happy to be around each other and shoot the shit and have a good time. Um, uh, man, I, I, I don't, I don't think I, especially for not really having any plans you know we, we we tried to plan things and and anything we tried to plan just sort of fell up you know fell apart and uh and, and so we just sort of took things uh you know minute by minute hour by hour day by day and said well what are we going to do now what are we going to do now what are we going to do now and just kind of kept in touch with everybody um and uh man it really i don't think i could have asked for a better four days like it just really worked out perfectly um and uh i mean a lot of that has to do with my hotel uh, the the hotel we stayed at just had the greatest lobby of all time where it was like just this big meeting room so whenever we didn't know like where to meet up we just said okay everybody come to the lobby and you know we were right into the liquor store and stuff and they just let us drink there and i mean they had these big tables and like big areas to hang out it wasn't didn't look like a hotel lobby it looked like like just a fucking lounge man like it was great it was the perfect place to hang out Dude, shout out to the the Hampton at what is it like Cross Crosstown. Point or something Crosstown in Boston. Yep. Um, they were like that was five gold star service uh, in every single way. They were so accommodating for us, and and they basically let us take over that lobby of that entire hotel. Um, even use their conference room for like a, a thing. And this was the thing though. This they they, the they thing. were trying to charge us like. A, a thousand fifteen hundred or something for that room and like, we and instead like we just fucking it. walked in and used it <laughs> and no one was looking used it anyways uh luckily there was nothing booked that night it was just the perfect timing but yeah man um that place was like our our um it was like an amazing central hub uh, i will definitely be going to like leave like an online review for them and just be like this is the greatest like place ever it was the best hotel service i've ever experienced um not only did they let us like take over the lobby like you said they let us, um, like, you know, have drinks, have food, eat there. They let us do a games cast, not live, uh, which we did. We actually did uh, pull off like a, a games cast episode while we were there on Friday uh, with a live audience. Uh, everyone that was in attendance, which I, which I apologize, Friday, is going to take a minute to edit because um, <laughs> th th it was it, it was two full hours. It was a two full two hour games cast, and uh, with all four of us, and uh, we we were passing mics back and forth, and uh, some of us were much louder than others, and so it's going to take a little bit of time to kind of equalize all that and make it watchable and listenable. Um, so be, please be patient for, for some of this stuff. I, I gotta say, man, I, I, some people in the chat are asking like, where's the videos? Where, where's the stuff from dude? There were so many moments that I was in the middle of a conversation with somebody and I was like, I should really film this or I should really take a picture. And I, and I consciously said to my, I, was, I said, 
I got to be in the moment, man. Like I, I got to enjoy being here and doing this stuff. Um, and so that was the decision I made was to be in the moment. Lots of other people were vid- uh, taking videos and, and taking pictures the whole time. Uh, so uh, I think that's all going to like, you know, come together and make a, a bunch of great footage. Uh, but man, just being there and being in the moment uh, is something that I don't think enough people do, right? People go on vacation. So let's make sure we get a selfie on the water. It's like, go, how about you enjoy being on vacation? Um but yeah, dude, there's a lot of great pictures and a lot of uh, a lot of great moments that were captured. Um, yeah. spe- special shout out to, I mean, dude, special shout out to first of all, fucking everybody that was there, right? Yeah. But the fact that Which uh, I was going to get to, I did want to, I did want to say one thing about the hotel uh, and, and so, stop promoting I, the hotel. We want to make sure we are <laughs> able to book this thing for the next Listen, game cat meetup. I, Don't, I we can't tell anybody how good the hotel is. I, I had to add one more thing about the hotel. Not only did they let us do, uh, you know, like, like stay there, hang out there. Um, they let us, uh, they also like provided like security for us. So like, it felt extremely safe. That was something that, you know, you and I talked about. It was very important that, you know, we, everyone that came out that we made sure we're safe and we're able to, uh, you know, be protected and everything. And like, we literally had like, like we had like one nightly security guard, but then we had like three security guards like constantly. So, and they were like, they were so cool. So, but, but to your point, Brian, yeah, we had people, we had game cats that came out, uh, like around 30 to 35. Um, it was a lot and shout out to each and every one, uh, one of you magical people, right. um, who really, um, you know, we had a couple that came like looper came out there from, from Europe, uh, uh metal gear solid Fritz came out from uh, the Netherlands and this was his first time in America uh, to come see this. And, and so like this, this trip in so many different ways, ex- like not like it exceeded all of my expectations and to get to connect with so many uh, of our community members yep. that are just wonderful people. And um, it was, it was incredible. And, you know, shout out to them as well in terms of, you know, also like partying, but partying responsibly. That's that's one of the reasons we were able to get away with what we got away with, which was a lot, uh, because yeah. everybody was um, you know, they were they were very like respectful to the place. They weren't causing disturbance. Everybody was partying, having a good time, um, but they weren't getting, you know, they were just having like like fun instead of being like really wild yeah. um and getting us in trouble and stuff. So so just really huge shout out to all the cats that came out there and uh, just were... Except for Nihilus Ryan, were, the game were, cat, who took off his mar- pants and ran around naked, shouting, <laughs> brain skin is the best! Brain, how, how have you not seen brain skin? No, he didn't take off his clothes, but he did recommend brain skin to me seven times when he was drinking, um, which I appreciate because I got home yesterday and immediately turned on brain skin. And I was like, how the fuck have I not seen this movie? This is great. Fucking... Eddie Furlong didn't do too many great things in his career, I don't think, but uh, but that was definitely a good one. So it's it's nineties as fuck. Um, <laughs> Can we did, not make this about Eddie Furlong? <laughs> so <laughs> no, go ahead. I mean, I wasn't going to until you asked me not to. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> didn't we all want to be Eddie Furlong when we saw Terminator Two? Thirty percent, Brian. Thirty percent. Like, you like, have to give me a hacking, mulligan here and there. Like today. Hacking ATMs and shit during T two. It's like we all wanted to be Eddie Furlong when we were like twelve years old. Come on now. Come on, true. dude. Um, yeah, uh, dude. I don't know. Um, lots of lots of great moments, man. And like, and and it's so it's so funny because you know I, I feel like sometimes I say the words like you know I'm Brian Paul. I love you all. Talk about what a great community we have, and it's things that we just kind of say. It's true. Don't get me wrong, but it takes a moment like this. It takes a weekend like this for everyone to be together and actually see the see the people, see the faces, uh, understand the personalities behind each of these usernames and profile pictures to really make me realize like, AJ, I mean, what the fuck is wrong with me, AJ? I'm sure you have a list that you've been, um, yeah. I mean, what are you, which thing are you referring to? (laughs) Well, I mean, currently (laughs) I'm referring to like people change their name to GameCat. Right. They, they, they tip during the shows. They, 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 they show up for every games cast. Um, they're in our community and they talk in our discord constantly. Right. Dude, they changed their name to game cat. And, and there's still something in my head that goes, yeah, they, they don't really care that much. 
you know, like, uh, like my, my inability to like, un like to really truly believe how much they care about us as people in the channel and all that. And then they, sh they show up and, and I find out, no, they really do fucking care. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's easy to fall in that trap, that, that repetition. I think, uh, I think for you personally, um, I think it was really good. Like you said, you don't leave the house very much. And honestly, like, you know, that's kind of a normal thing for a lot of people. When it comes to being in Boston, um, beautiful city, by the way, lots of sirens, but very pretty. Uh, but I know why you don't leave the leave the house now because it's, it's so freaking cold outside. Oh Dude, no, I love the cold. My oh window's my open all the time. God, I love it. It was that wind. Yeah. It was so freezing cold, and like every like walk we did across town, like every mile felt like five miles. Like it, it felt like just it was like I was climbing Mount Everest or some shit. Yeah. Um, and that was with like tons of things. So I learned a valuable lesson about traveling to Boston. And um, yeah, for for those that uh, plan to do so in the future. Bring gloves, bring a spare umbrella and or have an emergency umbrella and and bring like three jackets, uh, bring like a hoodie and a windbreaker and a beanie and all this stuff. But um, but yeah, man, it you know, I think it was really good for you to kind of get out of the house a little bit. And uh, it, when you do this, you you kind of get like a fresh perspective and, and everything like it. Like you said, it yeah. it makes you when you sometimes you fall into the trap of repetition, you can be in danger of kind of like, you know, taking things for granted or, or not realizing what you have or what, what's, you know, what, what you're capable of. Um, but no, man, you've, you've created something really special and you should be really proud, uh, of, of what we've got going here. I, and, and there is no bigger sign of that than, than, uh, you know, the experience surrounding this trip, um, going to PAX, hanging out with all the cats in the hotel, uh, walking down uh, exploring boston a little bit together and um it it certainly recharged my batteries and and my motivation for like what i want to do and and it, it the what we do here at brian has never been more clear uh regarding like our purpose and and what we are uh you know supposed to be doing here and and it's never been more clear and i'm super fired up to get back to work uh and, and and start uh you know representing this community properly yeah man i'm with you i'm with you um all right we can talk more so, about pax as different stories come up and everything throughout the course of the show uh aj yeah um but definitely and we want... do like you said and we do have we've got like pictures we've got videos we have developer interviews yep. um and uh, we, we have tons of content that we filmed that we will be sharing with you guys. So if you feel like you missed out on something, um, don't worry. We put in a lot of work to make sure that uh, we got you covered as well. And, and we'll share loads of the experiences with you. Uh, and, and please, yeah, if anybody feels like they missed out on like pictures and, and, and any videos so far, like, I mean, dude, maybe you're not part of our Discord. Like, go join the discord, click the link in the description. There's a whole channel devoted to uh, conversations that we were having for the GameCap meetup, uh, where we were like trying to keep everybody up to date as to what was happening. And then there's a sub uh, channel within that, a thread within that, that has like just media, you know? So when people were taking pictures, they were uploading it to there. Um, there's a yeah. lot, there are, there's a fucking butt ton of pictures. Uh, yeah, so you can get some good pictures and videos to, to, to hold you over until we get the uh, actual channel and Patreon content for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, man, but let's tackle a couple of these, uh, tips so that we can kind of get the ball rolling here. Uh, looper, the underground game cat who I can now fucking put a face to, um, Lo looper looper is as awesome, if not more awesome than you thought he might be with the level three membership says back into regular business. So soon respect, uh, dude, massive respect to oh. all the cats who <laughs> flew overseas <laughs> to come see us. Unbelievable. I love it. Speaking, developers, speaking um, of because... cats that flew overseas to come see us, miles Dyer with the level two membership says best community ever, dude. No shit. Listen, I saw somebody give a shout out to Wes on Twitter. I'm um, saying, listen, you know, Wes's father just passed. Like, you know, like he's going through a lot of shit. Um, but yet he still showed up, dude. I, I don't, I don't want to take anything away from that. Like, fucking thrilled that Wes showed up and, and that he was able to like kind of, you know, 
do what had to be done in order to you know still be here and, and be with the crew it, it meant so much to me um but dude uh this this was this was a lot for all of us i i mean like you know i i'm i'm obviously friends with aj and miles and wes and like just knowing what everybody was going through personally the fact that we all managed to uh put everything aside and just just cleared our brains and said this is happening and it's happening right fucking now we're going to go do this uh massive respect to everybody um especially uh especially wes but especially miles um and uh you know again it's just miles and i've had a lot of private chats and stuff and um you know hey shit you know depression's real it's fucking yeah hard, hard to get over that shit and dude if anybody has ever seen miles on social media and been like, wow, dude really understands social media and understands connecting and like, you know, making, uh, m making, uh, like, uh, making connections with different people and, uh, and, and developing these relationships. Just go watch him in action in person someday. And you'll be like, oh, Jesus, it's so much worse than I thought. <laughs> like, Miles was the first one up every day. He was the first one at PAX, like by Dude, hours in hours. He early. was like the last one leaving PAX. He was meeting with people like from IGN. He was meeting with people from Kind of Funny. He was meeting with just like, like what a fucking workhorse, dude. Like I, I, I would be jealous if I wanted to do that stuff. <laughs> like it's just, it's just this level of devotion to like what he does. It's watching it in action and 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 me feeling being like man i'm fucking tired and then he fl flies across the fucking ocean to come to pax and then still is like 10 times more m motivated than i am while he's there like just massive fucking respect uh i mean for for all my co-hosts but man watching miles in action was like eye-opening that's all i'll yeah. say yeah wes and miles big shout out to them for a lot of bringing a lot of the equipment as well because some of the videos we made wouldn't have turned out as good as they did without um, without their equipment that they provided. So uh, proud of the crew, man. Proud of the the cats, and uh, also shout out to the developers that joined us. We had developers from Skydance Interactive, you know, Saints and Sinners, Behemoth, um, to the top, and uh, well, that's uh, there was a developer that was also for, made to the top, and then of course, Brian, it wouldn't be an episode of Gamescast without. Uh, I'm with without me without a mention for uh, legendary tales man and because BJ the uh, director of legendary tales the founder of Urban Wolf Games came all the way to America uh, for the very first time uh, to GDC but then he flew after GDC flew all the way out to Boston just for us and we had a wonderful conversation got to got to meet him he's an amazing dude with an amazing personality um uh sharp dressed man too <laughs> really yeah Yo, you see you well, see that disney watch I, fucking slick, no. dude. <laughs> um uh, but uh but yeah even even brought me uh, a gift from uh korea uh, some some lovely lovely uh korean candies look how freaking gorgeous this looks I, I almost don't want to eat it, um, but I know it'll go bad one day, so I'm just going to eat it and then keep the box. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, but yeah, uh, amazing that uh, we had such a great turnout of developers. And like I said, we, uh, we've got a, a, an exclusive Legendary Tales interview for you guys um, once Brian and I uh, kind of get that sorted out and edited, and we will post that for you as soon as possible. So can't wait to share that, man. I have so much to do. Like I've got, I'm, I want to get caught up on all those videos that I wanted to get done last week. But, um, but then of course the genotype came out while we were gone. Overdark is suddenly coming out this week. Uh, we've got review keys, like a lot of shit is happening and, uh, holy crap, dude, like there is a lot to do, but it's definitely very exciting. And so, yeah, so please be patient as we, uh, try to get that stuff out to you. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of editing. Um, we got, I want to talk to Samson, 143VR, with the $5 tip, who is ever present at PAX East. Um, I feel I feel like I spent more time with Samson than anyone else. Um, and uh, dude's awesome. Dude's awesome. With the $5 tip, he writes, let's fucking go. Had a blast talking to everyone. Uh, yeah, man, me too. Me too. Samson and Brandon VR showed up at the same time. Yep. Um, yeah, Samson was cool as hell. Brandon uh, with sunglasses on from basically the start to the finish. Like, doesn't matter <laughs> no, what time of day. He took them off eventually. Um, 
But uh, actually, I, I realized if if, uh, if if Sony wants to increase their marketing strategy, they just need to have Samson. Uh, they need to record him playing uh, some VR games because man, he him and Metal Gear Solid Fritz. They're they're the only two people I've ever seen that actually make playing VR look cool. <laughs> like those guys got some moves, man. <laughs> I've got some good footage of them, and I, and I'm like, damn, like they look really cool playing VR. Like this is they, like they need to be like VR models, basically. Yeah, special shout out to uh, to to Igme, uh, aka Highlight Notes, who brought his PlayStation Five and PSVR two headset so that we could we could play it in the hotel lobby on the last night. Um, and dude, I mean, like. I would have been so paranoid about that shit being over there. Uh, and he was just totally chill, like, but like making sure everyone got to play. And dude, there were people passing by in the hotel lobby that like weren't part of our group that were like, Oh dude, that's cool. And he, and, and he like demoed it for them. He like, was like, Oh, you want to try it? And they're like, what? <laughs> like, it was really cool. I, th- I think, I think Igmi sold more headsets, uh, to people this weekend than, uh, than PAX did. Man, yeah, we were we were running our own little uh, <laughs> PAX booth and the thing, but yeah, man, and also you know just a, another fun story for you guys um, uh, and a testament to how amazing this community is. So when we got to PAX, um, there was like a there's a very small VR presence there, but there was but there was some VR presence. Uh, um, first of all, shout out to to Shell Games um, who who were out there uh, dem- uh, demoing their upcoming uh silent slayer i think it's called um but they just their level of professionalism and everything they're out there really representing vr making it look good um with their booth very professional and everything um but then there was one and i'm glad that there was just one but there was only one playstation vr2 headset uh that was out there and they were they had a, a kiosk for um captain toonhead and something we we were kind of like at first you know it was kind of sad because i w- my first day at pax we we finally tracked down the headset and we just find it basically nobody at the booth manning it and and so you know we were like well let's check out captain toonhead i guess because it's the only psvr2 game on demo and i put on the headset and it's just stuck in this searching for surroundings screen and it's like not even playable it was absolutely embarrassing uh by by those people that were supposed to be there um you know thing but this is this is how amazing our community is man um you know first the first day i i got it all set up i like even signed out of their psn account and like signed into like the the pax guest account and and configured it and i turned off the um I turned off those borders. I know they're supposed to, the tracking assist is supposed to help, um, but I hate the way it looks on, <laughs> on the demo screen. So I just turned it off because I didn't really feel like I needed it. Um, but so we got it up and running. And then the first day when we were leaving, uh, but when we are on the way out, we saw that there was a group of people like playing it. So we were like, okay, there's a win there. The second day and third day, um, you know, some of our community members, like uh, Nick, one of our head moderators, um, we've got this amazing footage of Nick sitting there, sitting with people, demonstrating how the, how to put on the headset and, and giving them some info about how to use it, explaining a little bit about PlayStation VR 2. We, we took over that booth and we're basically... Uh, basically uh, doing those people's jobs for them or whatever, but, but it was so much fun. And, and I felt like we really um, did our best to represent uh, PSVR two out there. There was, you know, Nick was helping people. Dan was out there uh, helping people. And then, and then I saw at one point on the last day I came and uh, just, I peeked on that, that booth every now and then. And I saw like kill artists sitting there playing and, and he had like a group of people surrounding him, watching him play. So um, really proud of you guys uh, for for just being absolutely amazing. Yeah, man, I did the same thing. Uh, I, S- Saturday was a really strange day for me uh, with PAX because I woke up super late. Um, <clears throat> like I, I was supposed to have lunch with somebody, and then like and then I and I slept through like the, because oh man, I was so fucking beat up from Thursday and Friday. Uh, that Saturday when I woke up, um, <laughs> uh, I I just woke up late. I woke up at two p.m. And, uh, and as you know, AJ, uh, there was like suddenly this rush for me to get down the packs. There was panels I wanted to attend and it was, 
I, I went from being like like all sore and tired and in desperate need of coffee and just wanting to stay in bed all day to being shit. I'm gonna fucking go down right fucking now and like you know like showered and and and, and called my uh, Uber. Uh, ordered an Uber while I was like still in my underwear, <laughs> like still getting dressed. I wanted to make sure that like there was no time wasted, rain down the packs, the whole thing. Uh, and so I, I had a weird day Saturday uh, where I was sort of like on my own for a good chunk of it. And like just went to panels that I wanted to go to that I assumed nobody else was interested in. And, uh, and but yet between panels, I snuck down to the show floor and, and to check on the Captain Toonhead booth, and there were fucking cats manning that shit. I knew it. Like <laughs> yeah. it, it was just it's it's this destination where you just like you know even though I was walking around alone, I knew I would run into cats when uh when I went over to the Captain Toonhead booth. So mad props to everyone who uh, did those people's jobs for them. I'm sure Terrorvision Games is extremely uh, happy that it was not a wasted weekend. Uh, publisher PM Studios obviously had no desire whatsoever uh, to demonstrate that thing properly. Yeah, um, but uh, let's let's tag a couple more tips here. We got uh, the game cat Andrew Ehrenreich with the five dollar tip says I went to PAX Thursday. How dare you, Andrew? You didn't come say hi. Uh, I had to leave around five p.m. Bummer. I didn't get to meet y'all. PAX was dope though. I uh, think you'll do another meetup next year. I think so. I think so. And and this turned out so great that I'd be glad happy to make this the the place um, but at the same time i know that it's super convenient for me to do this and not nearly as convenient for everyone else to do it so uh this will be an ongoing discussion i'm sure and uh if that's the case brian i will uh you know i will make sure next time i am prepared by the time that time rolls around so we won't have to rely on like you know crowdfunding or anything and right. um you know but i will say man you know it PAX East, the you know, it doesn't have the strongest VR presence, but this trip overall, I think, worked out much better than the first GameCap meetup. It had been four years since we had done this. Um, you know, we we did this in October 2019. Um, we, you know, chose a, a, a quiet little place uh, with two little spots, and then we did like, um, and then we did uh, Six Flags. <laughs> and I must say, even though this was more expensive and everything, uh, I think this was overall a much better experience. We were able to stay together and um, we were able to keep the group together a lot easier. And this was very gaming related, which was nice. Like this is the first time I've ever been to any kind of gaming convention. And the first time I like stood over the, the showroom floor, which is like the size of a convention center. Um, my mind was blown. Like I've never seen gaming represented, uh, in with such a physical presence before. Um, so it was like nothing, it was such a unique experience for me. Uh, and, and it was amazing. And, uh, we've got that picture of you and I sitting there together and you're pointing over to thing. Plus you got to see a, uh, Pikachu that had like swallowed another Pikachu. And <laughs> <laughs> that was also nice. Yeah. That was the very first thing we saw when we walked in was this big, <laughs> Costume was like Pikachu, Pikachu, Pikachu. I need a picture. You were like, "Bye, You're I choose favorite. you." <laughs> uh, Scott, the PSVR game cap for life with the level two membership says, "Glad you both had a great time at PAX. I nearly made it, but life got in the way." Next game cap meetup, I'll be there. IRL. Hell yeah. Was that twelve? What's that? Was that 12, 12 to Tom? Uh, Scott, the PSVR game cap for life. Oh, shout out to, to shout out to 12 to Tom who could not make it, but uh, because he couldn't make it, uh, managed to transfer his badges over to Nihilus Ryan. This is like game cat uh, love, uh, man. You know, it's like people like being like, oh, I wish I could be there. Stuff came up. I'm really sorry. And then, you know, managed to get uh, and because he couldn't make it, uh, helped out Nihilus Ryan. That was super sweet, man. It's like, you know, sometimes I'll, I, if it was me, I feel uh, that's not true. I didn't go to MCR and I gave away my tickets. Um, but I know how it is. It's like you're like so fucking stricken with grief and irritated that you couldn't go. Um, but but to but to think outside of yourself and think about other people and how they can benefit from your misery is 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 big, man. That that's really big, and, and that's that 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 shows uh, again what a great community this is. Yeah, big shout out to Twelve for that because I was really looking forward to meeting him too. Um, which I'm I'm glad that if he didn't have to make it, it was like I think the you know worst case scenario was he just like couldn't go and had to cancel some things. Um, uh, versus like you know something other like something worse happening. Uh, but I was excited to meet him because I've known him since like 2018 back in like the Prada days, and 
um it was was looking forward to reuniting with the old school crew there but but next time 12 next time we got you dude talk about an old school crew man like uh, jeremy fucking sofa king showed up mm-hmm. on friday morning uh and then kill artist presented the if you guys like ser- it, it, i can't believe i have to explain this get on our fucking discord you follow me on twitter <laughs> i posted this uh, it is kill artist was teasing this artwork they've been working on for months and uh and it was just and it was just the greatest uh color pencil drawing of all of the co, co- uh, all of the hosts and co-hosts uh of without parole and then even in, even included uh jeremy and michelle and desra uh in there and it, and it was great um and it was just right up top right up top in the center had dave station dave station vr as well man that warmed my heart and uh and uh sal sal and uh amy actually made an appearance as well and brought us little uh not only pax east pins that had like you know all of our channels logos on it right. um but also had a, a dave station logo um as well so it was awesome to uh to be representing the davester yeah uh, for sure and it was you know uh when jeremy showed you know uh, jeremy showed up friday morning and i was and i was like man i was so glad we were able to coincide the the reveal of the artwork with jeremy showing up because it was perfect uh, but i was also like surprised like you know how many of these game cats go back so far uh in the without parole history like they've been, they've been following us for a long time and a lot of people knew who jeremy was uh and so it was great it was, it was really yeah. really great to be able to do that it was- it was great to see him and he's the sweetest dude ever um he's always he's been texting me like even well after he left the show like years ago he texts me like every like christmas or thanksgiving and whatever holiday and just checks in and uh sweetest guy ever man so it was wonderful to see him again yeah absolutely um elvert with the two dollar tip says game cat meetup 2025 uh, yeah i think so I think so elvert it was also a great meeting elvert um he'd been he'd been on gamescast elvert. before talking about shocker ghost of tabor um you know so i knew what he looked like but you know you don't really get to know somebody not really until you get to meet him in person and it's uh it was really really great to be able to um elvert and i hung out a lot as well living legend with the canadian five dollar tip says happy monday cats damn i wish i was at pax east with the without parole crew if this was held in Toronto, Canada, I would have been there 1,000 percent. <laughs> yep, uh, and I probably wouldn't have been. And if we were already complaining how cold it was. Can you imagine how much colder it would have been in Canada? Ooh, man, yeah, it was cold. Um, but like I said, that that city, man, Boston is absolutely beautiful. Um, there's a lot of great history there that is really cool. It's by the water, which is great. Um, and I learned that, uh, dude, they have the, you guys have the greatest like seafood I have ever had. I ate so much seafood while I was up there. If, if, uh, again, trying to give you some pointers, if you ever go up to Boston, uh, at any point, uh, you have to get seafood. Um, it's delicious and it, it comes from like, uh, 500 feet away from the ocean and right onto your plate. And, uh, dude, the, the, that New England clam chowder, man. Oh my God. Like every morning I had to wake up, uh, after breakfast. Yeah. I pretty much didn't eat breakfast, but I would, we would, we would get uh clam chowder every morning and it was so freaking good. I just, uh, I just want more. Like I'm craving, I'm actually having like clam chowder chowder withdrawals right now. Yeah. I feel I mean- like it's the only thing that can make me feel better right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when people say clam chowder, they they talk about New England clam chowder for a reason. It is yeah, yeah. clam chowder. It's definitely the best. I've had it everywhere. It's the best here. Yeah. Uh, where where are we at with these tips? Um, Kill artist. Oh, there we go. Kill artist. The Dream Weaver Game Cat uh, with the five dollar tip. The amazing artist says best meetup ever. It was awesome to put faces to names and get to know everyone. It sure was. Mm-hmm. Kill artist even brought his daughter. Uh, the first time she'd been she'd traveled first time she was on a plane uh and right. you know man like oh, oh, is she, i i totally i totally felt like you know her energy because uh she was she's gonna say social anxiety too and so like you know not only was she traveling meeting up with a ton of people like dude like but and she fit right in she was she was super chill uh kill artists fit right in we all fit right in man like it was weird like th- this was a group of people who you would thought you you would have thought known knew each other their entire lives right everybody every it was great just sitting there and watching 
different little groups of people have their own little groups of conversations like that. It just, it just seemed so natural for some reason, like everybody that was there or there by association, you know, everyone's, um, I don't know if, I think Elbert said all the plus ones, even, you know, the, 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 the wives yeah. and the girlfriends and whatever, everybody and just brothers. fit right in. Yeah. Brothers, right. Um, Bambino Ramos and his brother, ben, you know, yes. Ramos brought his brother out, man. That was super, super awesome of him. And he's wearing a Kirby yeah, hat the whole they're, time. They're, they're, yeah. They were amazing, man. Yeah, everybody was amazing. Everybody was amazing. Uh, and it's like, yeah, it felt like a, it, it definitely felt like, you know, like a, like we know we've known each other for a really long time. And um, everybody, yeah, and it's like it, we just, just instantly kicked that off with like everybody. And anytime somebody else would show up, we're like, hey, you know, giving hugs and come sit down and come hang out and talk. And again, a lot of this worked really well because we had the right like space. Uh, the perfect space um, to to be able to do this. So the idea of you know packs and stuff uh, was was a really great plan. Yep, dude, I want to talk to Samson one four three VR with a two dollar tip. This is I got I got to tell you guys. Let me just read the tip first. He says almost forgot. Meta is beta now. Okay, listen. This was this is the most inside joke. That without parole has ever hosted, and I want to let everyone in on the inside joke. Uh, it, Samson uh, on on Saturday night, Samson, uh, Samson, me, and Albert were like the last ones at PAX. Like my panel ended at like eight thirty, and so we were like that very much the last ones at PAX. Um, and then we all hopped in the car, and then we went to pick up Igme uh, highlight notes. And so there was the four of us, and this is where. <laughs> And this this is the dumbest shit ever, man. But it like it sticks it's stuck in my head and I have to share this with everybody. We were talking about people online and the way they say things. And uh and, and the joke was that people say meta is better. <laughs> okay. People I've online they, they 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 say they say so they say Sony ponies, meta is better, right? This is it's just <laughs> silly jokes, changing one letter for another. And I was like, right, M E T A is B E T A. Meta is better. Yeah. And then we realized that B E T A does not spell better; it spells beta. It spells beta. <laughs> <laughs> so oh my our, our new t our new tagline for Meta is Meta is better. It's beta. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry. I know. I know that shit does not come across, and like I'm giggling over here, right? <laughs> I think it's the funniest shit ever. So I had to share that. And so if we ever say Meta is beta or Meta is beta, um, now you know. I like Meta is beta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because it's more confusing to people. Uh, everything's confusing, man. It's, it's <laughs> but yeah, that was that was a good one. Time to play VR with the two quid says lots of us wanted to go and show love, but money is a he didn't he didn't finish that thought, but we understand. Yes. Uh, dude, I, I I'm gonna get I gave everybody shit for not going. I gave GameCat Chicago shit earlier today for not going. We understand, Chicago. dude. But so many people wanted to go and couldn't make it. We understand, man. Like the, the economy sucks. It's it everything's expensive. expensive. Yeah. It's very, very expensive. Yeah, dude. I mean, you know, for for most people, the hotel was super expensive. The the, yeah. the, the PAX tickets were expensive. The, the 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 flight there and back, or or driving even, like just expend a lot, tons of gas. You know, I, I felt bad for anyone who drove, man, because it was just hours and hours and hours in the car, like Elbert. Um, so uh, yeah, props to everyone who did it, but. 100 percent so much understanding for everybody who wanted to and couldn't we understand yeah like i said and for all those that you know didn't we thought about you i i was thinking about you the entire time um you know trying to make the most of the the limited time we had with the people there um but i was also thinking about all the people that weren't able to attend the entire time and uh, we've got some special special stuff for you for sure that i can't wait to show you did someone make a joke about Canada being communist? <laughs> I, I have no idea. I missed you just, that. You yeah. just ruined the moment, though. <laughs> <laughs> They're not communist, but, you know, I'm, I like whatever they are. Um, <laughs> the virtual oh. resistance with the level one membership says, was hoping Miles would be next to you for Gamescast. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, get, I mean, you know, getting anyone out here for literally one hour and then having to send them all the way back is, again, expensive and time consuming and uh yeah uh when is miles isn't still here is he he's flying up tonight yeah, him and, yeah i think one of the tips uh actually is from dan and there's a status update on that all right I'm, um 
Okay, we're getting to it. We're almost there. Living legend with a Canadian $10 tip. This is turning into just the tip show. Uh, $10 says, holy shit, I feel so bad now that I couldn't make it to pack seeing that Miles and others flew all the way from Europe. Uh, that's next level dedication. I might not have been there in person, but in spirit. You are all here in spirit. Um, Always. Yep. It's good times. Uh, here's the update. Uh, Cerebral Frost, the PSVR cat. Nope. The... SPVR cat. I always get that wrong. With the level three membership, says I'm still here with Solid Snake and Miles getting dinner. It was so much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amazing. Oh, yeah, man. Holy crap. I spent a lot of time with uh, Solid Snake, uh, Ilko, uh, who came out from the Netherlands. Yeah, when we, we had to check out yesterday, and and we were like, well, we have to, our flight's not till eight o'clock at night. So, so you know, we need like something to do to kill, you know, about uh, nine hours. And of course, the the easy answer, the answer to that was much easier than we thought it was going to be. And it was like, we'll just head back to the hotel lobby and hang out. And of course, when we do that, like there's like all these cats, you know, like either leaving or that are still going to be there. And we just uh, Julie and I hung out there um, for literally like like another eight hours and just just passed the time hanging out with uh solid snake fritz and um latin the game cat and and uh, and then of course um bambino and his brother were there we saw a couple other people got to say goodbye to nick and stuff um and, and i was so was, worried was that we were going to start just naming lots of names because now <laughs> there were so many people and so many people i spent so much time with and and then we're going to leave somebody out and not mention them on today's show and, and i need to tell you I'm sorry because I can't remember everybody, and, and I know that. Uh, and but We're everyone operating at like thirty percent here, man. Just keep that in mind. Every like, everyone made totally an faking. sirens. Yeah. Everyone made. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait till they're done. <laughs> everyone made an impact on me, man. Everyone. It was yeah. it was great. Um, Shapeshifter, the amorphous game cat with the five euro says funding the crowd. And tipping the train. Thank you so much, Shapeshifter. The Marvel side with $50. $50. Said, so glad everyone was able to get out in meet up. Stay awesome, everyone. We'd love to spend more time on the tip because it's so much money. But we have so many more to go. And we haven't even gotten to the topic of the show yet. Uh, which which just changed because <laughs> because we're going to be running out of time. Waleed is now a game cat. Specifically, White Tiger with Canadian $2 tip says, did the meetup increase confidence on PSVR 2? Increase it, confidence. I would say it increased, um, like I kind of alluded to this earlier, it, it increased like uh, me knowing like what our purpose is, or it made me feel like I understand what our purpose is here, what we're doing here, uh, and what we need to do. Um, moving forward uh that definitely has never been more clear than now and um like i said we're going to be working really really hard to uh to you know just improving everything we're, we've been doing and you know take all the best stuff that we've been doing and and just working hard to to make sure that like our content our community keeps growing um that we get stronger and stronger and uh, we got something really special going here, you guys. Like, it, it really was a wake-up call that, like, you know, we've got kind of a lightning in a bottle situation, and we're not going to, you know, take that for granted for one second. And um, I, I think uh, I think there's really, really special things to come for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what increased my confidence about PSVR 2 this weekend was the fact that we couldn't even go away for three days without fucking shitloads of, like, games coming out and news breaking and uh, just all sorts of great stuff. I was like, man, we've got we've literally left for three days. And and, and, and Stride Fates got announced uh, for PSVR 2. We got the listing for Exorcist Legion VR on PSVR 2. So slowly those PSVR 1 games are making their way over. Um, Genotype dropped. Uh, on the store, we got you know uh, a, a message from Nox Noctis with review keys uh, for Overdark, which we didn't have a release date until like Dude. yesterday. For I mean, it's we we were we were we barely left. We were gone for like 
three days, dude. <laughs> four days, three, four days. It, so the you know, so again, every everyone that has a PSVR two and everyone that keeps up to date with you know without parole and PSVR two news and all that, I mean, like that that's where the confidence is. The confidence is from the fact that we just keep getting games nonstop, uh, and so. Speaking of that, let's knock out a couple more of these tips, and then we're going to talk about both of those games. Edward Harper says, anyone enjoying Happy Funland? The answer is no. No, we're not. I don't know. You said you said you did see some people earlier. Yeah, I saw that, people on or, Twitter uh, losing their minds, who must have lost he, their minds because they were like, this is pretty good. Like, yeah, know. but I think that's good. I, I think, you know, I think that's something that we really need to change in the the gaming culture is like it's like we really need to make more interest and excitement around things that people do enjoy you know there's there's ton there's like oversaturation of just like hate and negativity and a lot of it's fueled by like this this console war stuff um there needs to be some balance though there needs to be more groups like what we do here which is like if you're passionate about something, if you really, really enjoy something, then we're kind of at a at a pivotal point where it's like you need to start being very vocal about that and expressing that and and you know um, sharing the reason why and and talking about it because it's just the positivity it, it needs it needs some uh, some support and some nourishment uh, going around and and I think overall. In the end, uh, like you know, love and positivity will prevail. Yeah, I, I mean, I think so too. Uh, it's, I mean, listen, this is this is going to be in relation to Happy Funland. Uh, Happy Funland has a lot of fucking issues, like a lot of fucking issues that you can't deny, right? It's click turning only that needs to be fixed ASAP. It's fucking 2024, guys. Come on, get your shit together, right? But I think it's because uh, I think it's because it's reprojected, and they were like they probably had major issues with the with stuttering with smooth turning. So I'm pro I'm sure they just ripped that shit out. Um, the combat is terrible, like just absolutely terrible. Um, the rides are not fun. Uh, and so, you know, yes, yes, there's a, a great theme park there uh, to, to walk around and explore. Um, but man, it is so, so, so messy. It's such a messy game that feels like this should be the early access version. And in a year, you know, when, when they actually implement decent combat and uh, make the mini golf sections fun uh, and playable, uh, it, then, then great. But, but right now, this is just not where it needs to be to be anything I could possibly recommend. Uh, yeah, we have so many great best. stuff. So maybe not the games. best place to talk about um, <laughs> or for me to share a, a motivational speech about sharing. Yeah, it was a very strange, uh, very <laughs> strange place to bring that up. That's for because sure. because I have not liked Happy Funland at all. That is not a that is not the hill I was intending to die on right, right. there. Um, but but I just thought it was cool. I, you know, I, I've always said like you know the different strokes like. Yeah. Um, some some people really like some things some things people really hate the same things it's okay to disagree um right and and what what can the the best thing you can do with that is to kind of just say why you feel the way you feel about it and and you know provide that that uh, analysis behind it um but in you know the modern day the current day stuff it's very much just like this everything is either um, like the best thing ever or the worst thing ever and the problem I have with that is you lose a lot of the the facts. You lo lose a lot of the thing, and everything is just very emotion driven versus like actual like analysis driven. And that's the the change that I think we need to see. And that being said, um, yeah, in terms of Happy Funland, like I, I and and this was uh, something we did do cover on our uh, Gamescast, not live on Friday night. Um, but yeah, the the amusement park is actually really cool looking. I, yeah. I like the aesthetic of it. I like the look of it. The graphics have a little bit of like shimmeriness and whatever, but I think the graphics are pretty solid overall. It, but the frame the rate, gameplay, frame rate will chug here and there. It like yeah. it's it, it feels very stuttery uh, on occasion. Uh, yeah, but but still, you know, it's a twenty five dollar budget game. Uh, yeah. and so, so you know, these are the kind of things that you're like, well, for twenty five bucks, we can definitely uh, let a few things slide. Well. I definitely wouldn't recommend it at that price. Uh, I, I, but I would probably recommend it for like five or 10, just personally, like my personal opinion. Oh, listen, um, listen, listen. I recommend, okay, first of all, 
Does like the, eight to ten? We're talking personal. We're talking personal opinion, right? Actually, because yeah, because yeah. kind of going off what you were saying earlier, AJ. If you like something, fucking go champion it and tell people that like you fucking love it. Amazing. Exactly. But I can, I've got to talk about my experience. My experience is like, don't buy it. Not yet. Uh, because eight to ten dollars, I I wouldn't want somebody to play this right now in the state that it's in because it's not yeah. really fun, right? I, yeah, I don't. You're right. It's it's not about price. I think the price is actually really appropriate for when the game has smooth turning and when the game, uh, you know, fixes maybe some of the combat mechanics and if they can possibly add like ragdoll physics that. or something. If they can do that, then twenty five dollars is a good price. I beat yeah. the game before I went off to uh, uh, off to PAX. In the last half hour is like pretty cinematic and like really uh, way more exciting than anything else that happens in the game prior to that. And so like. I think there's a, I think there's a, I'm, I'm just going to publish my review tonight. There's a ton of potential here, a ton yeah. of potential. And so I see what people are enjoying. Uh, I see why people like certain things, uh, yeah. but it's, it's just not quite to the place where I'd recommend buying it yet. Yeah. But same, $25 same. when it's fixed, 100%, I think it's cool. Well, that's what I'm saying. In its current state, I wouldn't recommend it at full price. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend it at all, uh, to be honest with you, uh, unless, um, unless it does get some things fixed, but it almost, it almost had that kind of like, here they lie walking sim, uh, like trippy, uh, like uh, horror, like, you know, uh, scary kind of walking sim thing. Well, not scary, but um, just that kind of like atmosphere um, to it. But it, it, it has like that raunchy kind of humor, like, uh, and, and some, you know, a couple, a couple good things here and there, but, but yeah, it's just, just wasn't cutting it for me but yeah anyways yeah uh grandpa's barbecue or game cat with the level one membership says fantastic you all had a great pax um thank you Very yeah fantastic. Man, it was it was like i said it packs uh the whole experience it wasn't necessarily packs itself but like our experience like far exceeded my expectations like i thought it was going to be great but it was much better than great it was uh something incredibly special all right, two more tips, and then we're off to talk about games. Uh, Elvert with the $2 tip says, don't forget to bet on the Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> that guy at the liquor store. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. There's just too, there's too many little stories to explain them all, but that was fucking great. Uh, <laughs> Mikey D, the fuzzy game cat with the $5 tip says, sounds like it was such a blast. Was there in spirit next year in cat person? Hell yeah. Nice. All right, AJ. Uh, which which of these two games on the? Uh, I, I love that. Like, I love that we talked about stride phase for not at all, like two, <laughs> literally two seconds. Uh, well, but, you've got that on the uh, the pre recorded one, so we've got you right. covered there. That's right. We did a, we did a great two hour uh, live show uh, from 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 the hotel, and we will make sure that is up on. Uh, YouTube sometime this week, and then you can catch up on all the news we talked about there. Um, all right, man, which one of these two games do we want to talk about first? Genotype or Overdark? Your call. Yeah, yeah. So we we got back and we immediately hit the ground running again with some with two new games that dropped. Um, I would love to talk about Genotype first uh, yes. because I knew pretty much nothing about this other than like you had played it, Wes had played it, you were saying some good things, uh, but I had no idea what it is. But um, that's what I jumped into first today, so I, I'd be happy to start there. Uh, and talk about my our first impressions of uh, genotype. Well, AJ, before we even get talking about our our first impressions, we should say this is yet another example, like Ultra Wings, of a game that came out uh, before it was supposed to. The developers had sort of delayed it last minute, and uh, so even though it came out on the day that we were expecting it, uh, it actually was not supposed to be out until April uh, because they wanted to delay it last minute and uh, fix a few things up. Um, the, it's actually running right now at 60 reprojected to 120 and they are in, in the, the day one patch <laughs> will uh, change that to 90 native. Um, although I have to say, I have to say for a game that's being reprojected, it looks, it looks pretty nice, man. Uh, if they were just like, no, 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 this is what we're going to do with the game. I wouldn't really complain. I think it, I think it moves really smoothly. I didn't notice the reprojection all that much. Uh, I think it's, I, I, I think it's a, uh, nice but minimal upgrade from the version i played on quest 3. yeah um was this a quest 3 game or a quest 2 game uh, i mean i played it on quest 3 but it was i believe 
I, it, hopefully Wes is watching and he can tell me. I believe it hasn't it hadn't been up, updated for Quest 3 yet. So I, was, I think I was just playing the Quest 2 version. Yeah, one of my one of my pet peeves is kind of like, you know, I don't mind that we get games that came over from the Quest, but but I do mind when they feel like I, like I'm playing on <clears throat> I'm playing on a PSVR 2 and they look or feel like I'm playing on a Quest, like it's like that's not, you know, it's just not why I have a PSVR 2. I want <clears throat> I'm totally fine with the library sharing games. Um but you know, I'm I'm playing on a PSVR 2 hardware because I want a little bit more higher at the very least a little bit higher end P, like closer to PC VR right. um kind of experience or a closer to a console uh level experience um versus standalone. I mean, you have this additional horsepower and and features and you like to see that taken um uh, made use of. Uh and yeah, like so popping into this for the first time, I think uh the game to me, it, it looks really good. Uh, it, it's it's pretty sharp. Um, it, it's got nice use of like lighting, uh, and uh, it looks it, it's got like good textures. And then also on top of that, uh, they have some really good like uh, set pieces, uh, level design. Like there's a lot of details going on uh, in here, and so I didn't know what this game was other than like kind of, you know, I didn't know if it was going to be like a roguelike or what is it, but so far uh, I've played like an hour and a half of it and uh, I've been really enjoying it actually. Um, kind of like how you like some of those budget uh, horror games. I'm very much like a, I like a budget, like I'm into some of these kind of lower budget um, indie uh sci-fi games i'm a big sci-fi nerd wait so. wait wait i i feel like i i feel like it's almost like a um a guilty pleasure when i say i like some of these low budget maybe not so great horror games oh, okay but but but, but there's this is a, not a guilty pleasure yeah, yeah this should this shouldn't be a guilty pleasure for anybody this should this is just like Good. not not yeah not to not to rush to the end here but this is a solid fucking game with a lot of content um so uh, and it's a story-driven single-player sh first-person shooter, um, but it, it it's not just your typical guns. It's right. got some some really cool mechanics in it. But yeah, this is uh, this game is definitely uh, should catch the attention of anybody looking for a sci-fi uh, story-driven campaign um, that's like also a first-person shooter. There's uh, there's something about like the the world is being taken over by a virus or something. I, I hope I'm not confusing this with, with Overdark, but um, something has happened to the world and it's a, it's a very snowy, like out, outdoors uh, stuff, but then like everything inside is like these facilities and, and the designs of this like facilities and stuff look really good. It's not just like these generic gray corridors with like low res textures and just stretched out. It's like, no, like a lot of this feels really meticulously handcrafted and everything. And, um, dude, the combat, man, uh, th there's, there's, a, the, there's some solid, like, you know, combat sh and, and shooting in this with some, some decent mechanics. Uh, what, what was your, uh, well, how would you describe the, uh, the, the guns, the, the guns in this game or the, the, the gameplay mechanics? Yeah. You, you've got biological weapons, uh, basically attached to your hand you've, uh, and you find different, um, you find, you find them gradually. It's very, uh, I saw Nathan in the chat mentioned that it's very kind of Metroidvania like, and it is, uh, so you're finding, uh, different ways to, uh, to attack enemies. You're finding different ways to sort of interact with the environment. Uh, what I just got to, uh, the, the, the most recent thing that I unlocked, uh, the most recent blueprint I found was, uh, to craft something I called, I think it was called, oh crap. Now, I'm, now I'm thinking it's called the brain scan. It's not called the brain scan. That's the movie I just watched with Eddie Furlong. Oh no! <laughs> That's you knew I was going to bring that up again somehow. But anyway, whatever it is, it's like it, it actually the allows swarm? you. What's that? The swarm? No. Uh, no, no. The swarm is like almost like a machine gun type thing. Uh, yeah. The the one I got actually uh, it very makes it very Metroidvania like, where it's like, oh, all these like little access panels and stuff that I've been seeing throughout the course of the game. Now I can actually like shrink down and go through them. And so it oh. is very Metroidvania in terms of like slowly unlocking different parts of the environment, which means there's some backtracking, but I got to tell you right yeah. now for a game with a lot of similar looking corridors and similar looking, you know, it's like, a, it's a, it's not, it's not a space station, but it's a, a research station. You know, there's gonna yeah. be a lot of like similar looking corridors, similar looking environments, areas. 
there is a map that you can just have up at all times <laughs> to make sure that you do not get lost. And that is shit that I need. Otherwise, I would lose my mind. Uh, and so this has that. Uh, and and man, it, it feels like I'm unlocking new things, uh, meaning new weapons and, and new abilities like every 20 minutes or so. Like it does not it doesn't rest very long before it says, okay, we don't want you to get bored. Here's something new. And I really enjoy that. It is the game design doesn't feel like an indie game. It feels no. like something like bigger. Like if, 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 if it was like photorealistic, I'd be like, Oh yeah, man, like this, this game design is, you know, up there with triple a quality. Um, you know, it just kind of has like a, a little bit of an indie look, even though it looks good. It, yeah, it's got this almost like not visually, but, but mechanically it does have this kind of, uh, to me, like a early, maybe early 2000s, like first person shooter structure yeah. where, um, but I do like the level structure, how there's kind of branching paths uh, all throughout this facility. And you do kind of like backtrack, you can revisit them. Um, if you go like way out of the area, uh, out of out of that like area, and then come back, the enemies respawn, um, which, uh, but also the items respawn as well. But if you stay within that whole area, you can clear it all out, get all the items, and they won't respawn there um, until you completely leave that section. But um, I do like the way it is structured that way. And there's also, if you get like really far away, there is like a tunnel system that they have that they have as well, where you can uh, fast travel to like another point. But yeah, like it starts you out uh, in, in this indoor area, um, this kind of like facility or whatever, then you, you I, I really like the, the art design, like the level, the level designs here. Um, because like, yeah, it, it's like a normal research facility looking place. And then, but then there's like this beautiful, like auditorium stuff. And then you get to the section and it's got this like kind of like organic, like overgrown, um, you know, it's, it's like this place that's got like this, I don't know. It's been taken over by whatever's growing there. Uh, and it, it's cool. It gives this like, kind of earthy look to it. Um, and then you've got stuff that's like outside uh, in the snow, which is really, really cool. Um, and uh, the enemies, man, I'm, I'm a fan of, you know, st uh, these, the, the enemies are very like much like different kinds of like insects. Uh, they're, they're kind of like insects or crabs or something like, like alien versions of these things, of course. Um, they all, you know, they don't do anything super crazy, like animation wise, attack wise. Um, but I, but I do think that they're pretty cool. Cause it feels like you're going up against like these, like, uh, alien insectoids, uh, kind of things. And, and, uh, one of the favorite surprises of it is that there's actually boss fights in this. So like, yep. yeah, there was like a giant, like I, I, I've already within the first hour and a half, I've already fought like. I don't know, like four or five different types of little insects, flying ones, little tiny jumping ones, crab looking ones that shoot shit at you. See the floating and then there shrimp ones. Like super <laughs> floating shrimp ones. And then, and then, yeah. And then there was like this big, uh, giant boss that I had to yeah. take down with like weak spots and stuff. Yeah. The I, I think the boss, up, like, I think the boss is about to show up on this gameplay footage actually. Well, um, so, uh, that, that should be exciting. Watch me flail around. Um, Bob Axel says insects always bug me. Uh, uh is it friday Please already <laughs> um yeah man this is this has been like a real a real pleasure to play so far um it, yeah. it, there are there are reasons to explore every single room because there's like ammunition uh in the way that you, it's just cool like that you know sometimes in games you just pick up ammunition and boom it just adds to your whatever but you've got and this you all put it through it yeah you put it into your wrist like that you've got these gloves these special gloves and and you any all these items um whether it be ammo um wh yeah whether it be like ammo or like the the kind of currencies that are in the game that you use there's a, there's a whole upgrade uh booth that you can go to and like and like print um like use like this like animator thing a machine that will like print and you can craft items yeah uh, with like it. more you ammo, can also, health whatever yeah yeah and everything is like consumed by putting into your hand and then pressing the trigger and it, and it just like, you know, sucks the juice in or whatever and converts it. Um, yeah. And I mean, dude, in the, like, you know, uh, audio logs to listen to while you're running around, there are, uh, uh text, yeah. uh, 
crew logs like just floating around there's there's stuff to read it's all fucking optional uh and so like if you just want to play through this game you don't need to read anything you don't need to listen to anything uh it it's it's really it strikes this great balance that you don't find in vr games very often usually you know we complained a lot about happy Funland, where like the character just talks over himself because there's so much dialogue it's like there's there's some dialogue in here, right? Just enough to kind of like keep you interested, but it doesn't overdo it. Uh, the tech, like I said, yeah. and all the extra stuff, all the all the filler story is all bonus, and you don't need to pay attention to it at all if you don't feel like it. Right. And I was gonna, I was thinking the same thing as I was playing it, which was like this has just enough like story and dialogue that to tell you what's going on and what's happening and what you need to be doing. Um, but it's not like a voice constantly talking like it, it they really disperse this really well um, to keep it like fun and engaging and let you play the game, not just have some talking voice in your ear. You know, that's like one of our biggest pet peeves right. is when a voice just doesn't shut up and let you play the game. Um, the last thing I'll say is the uh, the weapon wheel is very interesting. This game is very like a great example of just like kind of classic formula but really well executed and designed for VR because the weapon wheel is essentially like a rip cord um, that you pull and it's got these like tickers uh, that like, which whatever one you like basically stretch it out to um, and let it go, it will spawn that, that bio weapon on your hand. And, and uh, I love it, man. I, I love that. There's not these like, you know, there's not like all these menus and stuff. Everything is trying to be as diegetic UI as possible. Um, and that's pretty sweet. Nathan says it's like red matter, but less boring. Uh, and I can understand why he'd say that, right? Because it's it's action focused rather than uh, red puzzle matter focused. Not boring. <laughs> um, this is, I mean, it, it has it has it feels like red matter without puzzles. I think is the answer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, and, and giant insects and stuff. Uh, 12, the backlog game cat with, uh, says, uh, may just be me, but the social screen doesn't look as polished as the quest three version. I, I, I played this on quest three and then I played the, played this today on PSVR two. Uh, both are very polished, very polished. Uh, so far it I'm, looks really good. I, I will say, uh, it's, I think, I think when they, I think when they make it 90 native, uh, the, the PSVR two will definitely have the upper leg on this one. Uh, the, the upper leg is that is that an expression? I don't think that's an expression. <laughs> Usually it's a hand, but uh, the, you the know, upper hand. It's, it's another. It, oh, it'll have a leg up. <laughs> it'll have a leg up on the Quest Three version. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What I will say that what I'm really surprised about is that there's like you know one of the weapons that you use is is kind of like almost shoots this grapple and you pull and like so it's like infinite ammo, yeah. but you have to be kind of close to the enemies. And it's so like it's a melee weapon that yeah it's like a melee weapon but like you know it's almost like a whip i guess and right. uh, and, and and so when i played this on quest 3 i was really expecting the haptics on psvr 2 to be great uh really expecting the haptics in the headset haptics in the controllers and the adaptive triggers to all be on point because that was yeah. really going to push this one over the edge and really it's th the haptics that are there are extremely subtle and i didn't feel yeah. any adaptive triggers uh i messaged yeah. the developers and said hey um, you know, thanks for letting me know that this is going to have like a day one update when it's supposed to release in April, um, which is going to address a few things. Uh, I said, but listen, these are the things that we're interested in. We, we, we we're looking for a better haptics. We're looking for adaptive trigger support. And they said, it's on the list. It's just that we're a small team and basically doing what we can. Uh, so, uh, if, if you're patient, you may get these things in the PSVR two version eventually. Um, yeah. but, uh, but, but so that was the, only, that was really the only disappointment I had was that. You know, it, they really didn't take full advantage of what they of the PSVR two hardware. Yeah, it, I mean, they obviously prioritized like graphics performance and stuff. But uh, and I think the I think the big thing you want to uh, wait for maybe is this ninety uh, native update. Um, I, that being said, it it looks really good. So, um, like, I mean, it it will probably look better. So, but. But, you know, when it already looks really, really good, uh, it's like I, I have zero complaints. Like they could not even update it and I'd probably be fine. But I do look forward to it looking better. I think I think it would it would be nice. Uh, you know, why not? Um, but, yeah, I totally agree with you. Like like consuming those items in the wrist thing, you, you press the trigger. So I would have liked a uh, resistant trigger every time you do that and some haptics to kind of feel it like, you know, consuming the item um because it's a really cool mechanic and, and it's a little bit 
they 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 did things they took like a a proven formula and then like altered it like everything feels like familiar but it's like we're doing it a little bit differently so like it's not like completely new um like it, it feels like a first person shooter but it's not just picking up a laser gun and going pew 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 it's like like you said you got these like all all these new interesting kind of unique mechanics that i that i uh have a lot of respect for with with what they've done here it's pretty sweet interesting in the chat uh we're gonna go with tripod because there's not enough uh, vowels in your name so i'm gonna guess that's what you're saying uh he says the quick travel tube system is currently not working will be patched on april 6th when the game was supposed to be released another sony botched release gameplay is pretty solid though uh, that's funny because i um i i got to a place where uh you know the, the fast travel tube actually would have worked and i didn't even try it out so thanks for the heads up on that um yeah I know he's, I was actually going to bring this up uh, as the last thing as a precaution, maybe want to wait for the patch is, uh, yeah, if they have the 90 thing, um, uh, 90 uh, frames per second update, that'll be nice. But yeah, there's, I, it did happen to me once where I went back to explore an older area and, and then uh, kind of like just collect some stuff, grind a little bit. And then I use the fast travel system back and it spun me like in the, like, in a weird part of the tube where I was stuck and it, and it was broken and I couldn't, it, it, the only way to do it was to uh, reload my previous save at uh, one of the computer stations and I lost all that progress that I had. So yeah, that's, that's the big, uh, a big bug that I've noticed so far, which is unfortunate, but um, like you said, hopefully that's gotta be, in, that's likely going to be included uh, in, in the update coming soon because otherwise everything else has been i've been thoroughly enjoying this game so far yeah excellent excellent well great first impressions man um this is i mean this is this is what happens man when it when an indie studio like this this is i believe had been in early access on steam for a for for quite a while right i think when it launched it did it maybe not even have combat because they were hyping up the combat update so much so you know like just having this this game that was was sort of there and there was like these exploratory elements where you're like looking around trying to like decipher the the story of what happened here and all that and figuring out how to get from place to place and then they added combat all this it's um it's it's just really good when these when these studios are don't mind taking their time really adding and adding and adding and adding and adding until until the game feels like it's complete uh and you know and we got the, the price point on this is like 27.49 or 27.45 it's some weird ass mm-hmm. canadian price um but in the us um and and i guess i gotta say like you know when, when it comes to getting games that feel complete you know like it it maybe maybe it's time to start putting our money where our mouths are you know like this is yes it's close to 30 but man I just just really Dude, enjoying it. I mean, I'm noticing this trend that indie games lately have been really good. Like this is if this is like what indie games are going to be like moving forward, like I'm happy with this. Uh I this is not this this feels like a like so far, you know, obviously I'm only an hour and a half in, but so far this feels like a full game experience and and a pretty fleshed out one and pretty and like, you know, minus the some of the issues because it launched early. Um, overall pretty polished like i've been really enjoying this so like between the you know legendary tales and cube um and ultra wings 2 and then stilt and little cities and stuff and now now uh you know some of these games we're getting like uh i'm liking this direction that indie game development is going i think there's been just loads of progress compared to what uh indie games looked like just a couple years ago um oh, well, give me one second here looking one thing up so i, I saw rap up in the chat um talking about canadian prices and he threw me for a loop here so i just want to make sure i get this right 27.49 uh so yeah 27.49 here in the states and then uh rap up gave us the actual canadian price which is 36.49 so all sorts of weird ass prices um <clears throat> anyway uh uh tripod gives us a little more information here in the chat saying that uh it it he said i got half an hour to the end yesterday then died only to discover all my saves were broken in a way i could not progress uh yeah. but the developers are aware over on their discord um so 
it so sounds it, like the uh, wait for the patch because it released early by accident. Right. And I was hoping it was good enough to get, you know, to so like be like, yeah, like no, that's fine. But yeah, it sounds like sounds like you're gonna want to wait for that. And the bonus is you'll get the uh might get that uh ninety native frames per second in the process. So um probably best to just hold off, put it in your wish list for now. Uh but keep an eye on this one because uh, I am really enjoying it so far. Yeah, once this one's taken care of, this is a mm, almost must-have. It's definitely a have. It may not be a must-have, but it's damn close to must-have. <laughs> it is All a right. have, yeah. That's good enough. Let's uh, let's move along to the next game that or the other game that we played today, um, and that's Overdark. AJ, you've Over been uh, you've been a Over little dark. down on Overdark. Oh, do not I'm not open the only story. one. <laughs> uh you've been a little down on it and uh and basically said you know you were you're concerned about it or that maybe you didn't think it was going to be terribly good terribly good um it's like another high uh hap kind of like to me it, it was grouped in in terms of hype levels kind of like happy Funland, where mm -hmm. it's like i have very low expectations for this just because of not because of the studio not because of anything just historic like just by going by what history has taught me yeah. Oh shit. You know what? I, I meant I meant to mention this real quick. Uh, I know we've already moved on, but genotype, sucky loading screens on uh, on Quest Three. The every you know when you see the loading screens, AJ on on PSVR two, and it's like yeah. over before it starts. It's like push R two to to yeah. play. It's like loading press R two to start. It's like literally one second long. That shit's yeah. way too long on 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 Quest Three. Oh uh, yeah. And so uh, so yeah. So you get the bon the benefit of the solid state drive over here on. PS5 and PS5. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it before you can even read where it's telling you you're going, it says press R2. Right. It's like like yeah, one two seconds, and that's it. All right, back to Overdark. Um, okay. <laughs> so uh, so dude, this was this. You know, I I had only played the demo over on Steam, uh, and which was pretty short, and uh, Sirens on my end. Uh, but it, it seemed like it was going to be all right. It didn't seem like it was going to super special or anything. Uh, but definitely felt like it was going to be creepy. Um, what, uh, I, I, I'm happy to say, I'm happy to say that I was, I was fairly happy today with what I played. Um, but why don't you, why don't you, why don't you tell me your first impressions of this so far? Um, so I've played about an hour so far. Um, and yeah, you know, it, I, I don't know. I, I really didn't know much about this game. Um, other than, you know, I had been following do not open since, 2020 um i had been following that game it was first announced i think in early 2020 and i was really excited about it and then you know by the time the game was actually going to come out like it was seemed like way different than what i originally saw like um it, it seemed more of like a run for your life simulator at first and then uh once you got your hands on it it seemed like, or it was, yeah, it was like originally kind of like a run for your life simulator that was like 45 minutes long, but replayable. Like that's what we were expecting years ago. And then the game actually came out and then you were talking about like how, you know, it has these puzzles where you like actually have to write stuff down. And I was just like, ah, oh, you know, so like all this just kind of like made me kind of lose interest entirely. Um, but then, uh, we talked about that they had now started to redesign um, this this game for more built for VR uh, experience, and um, so far, uh, I saw the trailer first of all when I got back. I, I got I saw the trailer I think for the first time like yesterday or this morning, and I was like, "Damn, that's a good trailer!" Like this is looking, you know, I I really don't ever can't try not to judge by a trailer, but um but they actually put a really well made trailer together and it's based on the do not open universe um it's a, it's actually it's it's a sequel is what is what they're calling sequel. it so um okay. they recognize the issues that the the first one had uh, why they would why it wouldn't work in VR and so for the sequel instead of just uh, they they it, it is a VR sequel uh that takes place after the events of the first game and uh and yeah they absolutely recognize what doesn't work uh in vr and uh and, and absolutely change things up mm. i i probably only got about halfway through uh, do not open proper uh and this is a far more enjoyable game already 
Yeah, so like I said, uh, you know, to finally, I know I do a lot of build up a lot of times. So I explain like the long history that I know about this game, even if it's not very relevant. So sorry, but I do that sometimes. I AJ the fuck out of things, as you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so the first thoughts was I, I jumped in and um, I was like, wow, this is very pretty. Uh, from the main menu uh, alone, uh, it's got you in this like weird like bathroom and it's very dark. Um, there's some weird like, dude like twitching in front of you and um graphically it is very sharp and crisp and it's got that thing that i love which is like this just this it looks it looks very polished in its presentation the 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 floors and the surfaces are very glossy and shiny and i've always loved that um but uh but yeah and the 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 game uh so far Honestly, it has not been like super scary for me yet. I don't know um, if it's just building up to things. That's what it it feels like the beginning of a really good horror movie that you would like where it's starting out and it's not it's not like getting to the scares right away. Like it's like building up to it. There is like some like shocking things here and there. Um, but for somebody that is very initi- like uh, initiated to horror um it it hasn't it been like super scary yet but yeah the the environments the the detail the polish everything looks really nice so far and the majority of my experience so far has been basically exploring with a flashlight and kind of just figuring out what's going on uh there's there's apparently some virus that has broken out and you're trying to find um i i think it's your daughter or something and you're kind of exploring this uh house um that's kind of creepy and uh you've basically got nothing but a flashlight which i love if if like i love when horror games don't give you like a bunch of like like bazookas and stuff i mean i love those too but i love true horror games that uh just give you like a flashlight and it's like you know good luck um and yeah so there's been some some problem solving or some some puzzle solving a little bit and a little bit of survival that that uh, one moment that there's jump scares in this that got me good, um, but other than that, uh, I, that's that's about it. Um, pretty much just like one jump scare so far, and the rest has kind of just been exploring this creepy place and trying to figure out what's going on and um, and just trying to figure out what to do next. This is super fucking puzzle heavy. Like this so far has been almost nothing but puzzles. Uh, so this, this is a warning. Basically, if you like horror games, but you hate puzzle games, uh, this, this is going to be a tough one for you to get through because th- that's exact. This, this is all puzzles so far, uh, super duper atmospheric. Uh, I think that so far my, the tension that's been building has been coming a lot from the audio. I think they did a great job in the audio department on this one. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely got my uh, over the ear headphones out on for this one, uh, and just feeling like you know all, all the tension that they're trying to build, the sound effects, the the kind of like ambient, uh, almost generic horror noises that they throw in. You know, like like you'll hear like the like this, and you're like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. And it's nothing, right? But they're just trying to keep you on your toes. It, right and it works man. like like it works something it sounds like a body hitting the ground somewhere like in another room <laughs> right right uh and so uh so 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 far um so far it's just a it's, it's just a it's a strictly a puzzle game that takes place inside a a very scary house um and i'll tell you i've, I've I, I, I want to go to so many different places right now with this conversation but let me stay on the puzzle side of things Right now, uh, I get to a point where like I had to pull a fuse, and I had to, and, and and so as soon as you pull the fuse, the lights go out, and so now I'm like now I'm relying on my flashlight. Uh, One hundred percent. It's so dark. It's so dark. I'm, the second a, you pull I'm that, a, it's pitch ways, black. Yeah, I'm a ways past that. And okay, yeah, well, that I sent you a text earlier so saying I'm confused. I need help. Uh, so fucking respond to that shit. Um, <laughs> I can't move my neck. I just tried to look around for my phone, and my neck hurts. Oh. Um. And so, uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's funny because yeah, you pull the fuse out and it's like, it doesn't just go kind of dark. It goes completely dark. It goes, it goes over, over dark. dark. <laughs> and so, so then you're like, suddenly you panic and you go, oh my God. And you double click the, the R2 to pull out your flashlight. And then suddenly you feel you know good again, but no Mura, no Mura. Again, this, this is very, um, this, this is something we've been saying a lot lately. It's, uh, the, I'm just 
not getting that Mara effect uh, from these super dark games that are using the OLED panels, blackest blacks. Like this game lives up to its name. It is super dark sometimes. The flashlight is awesome. It looks great. The shadows are great. No Mara. It's fucking crazy. Uh, I did get a little bit, but like, like I don't know. It was there's some like darker areas where I didn't have the flashlight on that it like popped up. Like I saw a little bit of it, mm -hmm. um, but it was like performance wise, like there's. I, there hasn't been like anything like it, it looks great to me overall. Like it looks really, really good, especially for an indie tile title. It looks extremely polished. Yes. Um, I did see a little bit of that here and there though. The little bit of things at like certain times, not enough to be concerned about like hardly even noticeable. If I, if I wouldn't even notice if I wasn't looking for it. Um, well, and I, then, and then a, I do, I do want to, I do want to say while we're talking about the graphics though, like very, very polished for an indie game, very polished. Like yeah, it, yeah. it, it looks Definitely. awesome. Um, however, I had to message the developers because I asked him, uh, if they were using, uh, if they were, if, if they were using like what, what the fuck the frame rate was in this game, like, right. what are they using? Because there are moments that everything feels silky smooth. There are areas yeah. like this one right here that the whole, it's, it's big room, tall ceilings, everything like that. And you're just like, wow, this feels like it's running a 90 native, no problems at all. It feels great. And then you'll hit rooms where it, it, it feels stuttery and re like, kind of like, like as if it's like you know reprojection yeah. is like hitting the fan, um, and it, yeah, there was a couple of spots where it, like like you said, it, it got a little stuttery. Sometimes, like I don't know if it was certain sections or if I was like turning again. It felt like just rooms, like certain rooms ran better hmm. than others, and so okay. It, and uh, so I had messaged them and said, "What's the deal?" And they said, "Oh, we're running reprojected at one twenty, um, but 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 very uh, good." good amount of this feels like it's running native 90. So it feels like it's really smooth. And then, um, and, and then other parts of it just feel like, man, something doesn't quite feel right here. If I had to guess, I'd say reprojected, but, um, I mean, it is the whole, that's what they said. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sorry. I already um, gave you that answer before, <laughs> before you guessed. <laughs> oh, also we need to make a disclaimer here. What we've received is an early access, uh, version, uh, yeah. early preview version. There's, uh, there could be some things that we notice that are going to be fixed. They said they have a day one patch or like, actually, I think they have like a couple patches uh, coming out like very, very soon. So um, I'm not, I haven't really ran into anything like technical issue wise. Maybe. Yeah. Like I haven't really had any, like uh, I don't even think I've had any bugs or anything yet, but there are some known issues in the game that they did say uh, just, you know, be aware of that, that they're aware of them already, that there will be, um, a, a, a patch coming this does uh, this day, does not seem long. to be one of those issues however um yeah talking yeah. to them so okay. uh right yeah uh, i saw rachel in the chat rachel the janky game cat says uh, sorry a few streamers say it's a bit of re1 homage horror puzzles and darkness great combo uh yeah i mean the thing is is so far again it's all puzzles so it's really hard to say you know re1 too much right because so much of that was ammo conservation survival horror um zombies uh but but this is but this so far uh there hasn't been any combat it's been uh it's been it's been all puzzles and so again if if i got to a point and this is and this is again i may i could have just missed something very obvious but i'm i'm to a point right now where i'm like i don't know where the fuck to go and so this game yep. can drive you crazy when you're just like man, I'm missing one thing. There's an item somewhere that I don't know, you know, where it is, how to get it, whatever. And that's what I need to progress. And so like, like a typical puzzle game until you solve that puzzle, you're kind of fucked. And so it, it pulls you out of the tension a little bit, pulls you out of the, the horror, pulls you out of the scary environment when you're just like, I don't know where to fucking go. And you know, it, 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 a lot that I've seen so far has revolved around locked doors. They're like, oh, I got to find a key. Right. And then you have a key and then you just go try it in every single fucking door that you find. Right. And so, yeah, uh, I get, I get the RE1 comparisons. Uh, however, from a gameplay perspective, maybe here puzzles here and there, maybe, uh, uh, are reminiscent of RE1, but overall no. the gameplay is not. Yeah. There's, n I actually find no similarities to resident evil one at all. Not like propagation paradise hotel was, um, yes, that felt more but like visually, I do think the art style does remind me of Resident Evil in general, like some of the newer titles, especially the the remakes and the uh, and like seven, like it does have that, you know, that nice polished look about it. And that that real it goes for that realistic look. 
Um, so the art style is the only thing I would like kind of compare. But other than that, yeah, like you said, gameplay wise, everything, um, it's a bit of a stretch to compare to that. Although the, I can see like maybe one or two similarities, but but really, really minor. It's kind of, to me, it just, it's like you said, it, it feels like it's doing its own uh, uh, kind of puzzle horror kind of thing. And and uh, I, I, I think it's okay so far. Like um, I, I've actually been enjoying it. I, I need to play a lot more though, to see where it goes because yeah. The, the one thing I was the one thing I was surprised about is like I I'm not finding it like super scary just yet and I and it, like the trailer it looks really intense it looks like you know it looks really intense really shocking and in a lot of ways and and I just one hour in and I haven't really aside from just like some kind of things like I haven't really gotten the heebie-jeebies yet just a just a quick jump scare and um, I have also where I left off. And by the way, Brian, the reason I didn't see your text was because I was playing this up till 20 minutes before Gamescast. Um, but uh, that's funny because I, I didn't left... see you until three minutes before Gamescast. <laughs> <laughs> I took a shower. Oh, right. Um, right. You don't uh, want the cats to smell you. Yeah. Uh, no, it was just for, for the sake of being able to function. Um, but I did actually get stuck uh, as I left off. It was kind of perfect timing because I had to go anyways. But I did kind of get stuck because it does... You know, it's got this inventory system, kind of like you know the Resident Evil, where it's you you bring up the inventory. It's got these empty box spaces, and whenever you want to interact with something, you take it out of that spot, and then you know if it's a key, you take it out, uh, put it in the keyhole. And um, there's some of the items uh, I I did have a little bit of trouble like grabbing at sometimes or interacting with. Like it gives you like this marker, um, but the marker is more like this is the item you need to interact with versus like grab here. Um, so that was kind of throwing me off a little bit at first. And, and it just seemed like it was kind of hard to tell when I could grab something and when I couldn't, um, that could have been a little bit better. And it, it does tell you the nice thing about the menu system too, or the, the inventory system is it'll tell you what your current objective is. So you can get lost, um, easily because you're like well what am i supposed to be doing but it'll you bring that up and it tells you go find this person or, or uh, maybe or, maybe i'll have to double check that because i do feel like where i'm at right now should not be so mystifying like why yeah like yeah. and we'll talk about it after stream too sure. just to yeah i don't want to ruin anything for anybody for um, sure. i don't want to spoil anything yeah. but i will say that where i left off I did the last thing it told me to do, and and now it doesn't say to do anything else, and I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing next. So, um, it's a little strange. I I think maybe I just need to explore more. Yeah, it, it I can see this. I 100% can see this getting. I wouldn't say like. Uh, I would say just maybe like a little frustrating, like as to like what am I supposed to be doing? Where like so to the the frustrating part would be is that I want to backtrack. Like when I don't know what to do, I backtrack a lot. And then I, and then I end up wasting a bunch of time yep. going all the way back to the beginning of the level when I didn't need to. And then I come back because something wasn't functioning properly, working properly. Like, like there was like a door that had like a lock on it. And like, all I had to do was grab the handle and just unlock it. And, and it wasn't, it wasn't like registering properly, uh, uh, like okay. easily. So like I ended up like walking like back like quite a bit and then oh, and then man. i was like you know what this has to be like what it was and i went back and i was able to open it and i was like oh. like i just wasted like a bunch of time going backwards um so again they did say that they do have some stuff like, like some patches some some things going so it remains to be seen how much of that's going to be affected but um but yeah man at this at this time I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing either. Uh, but it was it was good timing, a good place to leave off because then games we had to get ready for games cast. Yeah. Um, yeah, a little weird. Uh, there was like a, a, a cigarette that was like, I think sitting on a piano or something like an ashtray on a piano. Yeah. And I was like, well, can I smoke this? Like it's VR. The first thing you want to do is grab something. Of course. Put it in your mouth. I like that you can grab. I like uh, this game is very VRAF too. Like there's, objects in the room and you can 
grab them and pick them up, knock them over, things like that. Yeah, yes and no. Like I'd say about half the things I expected to be able to knock over, I was able to. And the other half is just like, it's weird that some are and some aren't. Um, also, like instead of having like actual locations, like where you pick things up, like if you were to grab a box, you know, usually like your hand will like, you know, create kind of a grab the side of the box and make it look realistic. Um, this game doesn't have that. It just, you, your hands become sticky hands. And so it's almost like surgeon sim where everything's kind of like just ridiculous. And so you grab something and it just sticks to your hand and it's, it's, it's very weird. So yes, VRAF, uh, in terms of like being able to knock a bunch of shit over, but, um, kind of ruins the immersion a little bit in the process sometimes. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, man, this is uh, this, this is this is going to be an interesting one because I'm a little bit torn on it right now. I'm I'm really enjoying the environment. I'm enjoying some of the puzzles. It's weird how frequently I feel like I'm getting stuck, um, and and yeah, some of the interactions are a little bit weird. Uh, but but overall, I'm I'm enjoying the atmosphere enough where it's like, you know, comparing to Happy Funland, where it's like, if if Happy Fun Funland was at least like spooky and I was enjoying the ride the whole time, you know, just because like here I am in this in this place and like I. I it, it, it didn't it didn't deliver enough on the atmosphere gave us a great park to explore but didn't give us the atmosphere this is giving us a cool house to explore and delivering on the atmosphere and it so it makes it a little bit easier to excuse some of the uh some of the jank that we encounter and uh but again i'm i'm very torn on it right now and i'm going to spend a lot more time playing it over the next day or so and make sure that we have a review ready for uh for launch day yeah i'm hoping it gets more scary um you know that's that's what I really wanted uh, from this, but I I would be happy if it's just a solid you know horror themed puzzle game as well. Um, there has been like you know not scary stuff, but but just like some freaky stuff going down um, that I thought was very interesting. Did did you that thing that you texted me about? Did you ever get past that or no? No, that's where I stopped. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so I don't I don't think you've been. You we'll haven't talk. been like, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, the people in the chat are asking about the price, and um, and I don't think it's... I Listen, please don't quote me on this. Uh, from what I understand, it's supposed to be $30, but I just checked the press kit, and there's no price on there. Uh, okay. So I could be wrong about that. Um, and if this ends up being, you know, four or five hours uh, and keeps up the quality that I've seen so far, it, I think it might be worth it. But we'll see. We'll definitely keep you posted. Uh, time to play VR with the two quid says, does this remind anyone else of Don't Knock Twice? Don't Knock Twice wasn't very polished. Uh, and this God, has... this has It was incredibly broken. This has way more polish than that. Um, and But less scary. This is less scary than Don't Knock Twice. Yeah, this yes. is way more polished. Although it does still have a tiny, tiny, very minor jank. Um... This is minor jank, uh, but yeah, I would say Don't Knock Twice was way more scary so far, um, but this is definitely more polished and kind of just better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all of these games, uh, to an extent, are, are you know, when, it, when, when they're horror games, like when that's almost the main defining genre of a game, they all start feeling... There's, there's major similarities between them, right? Like Paranormal Activity, uh, Don't Knock Twice even uh even do not open this uh, all of these games there, there's there's a certain general vibe that they all have that they all share uh whereas like horror is a main theme of the game and so that's sort of why you're playing it um but yeah this being so puzzle heavy uh that's i think that separates it from the other games uh, significantly because the other games had puzzles but they there was a lot more to do while you were solving the puzzles this just feels like you enter a room and you're like oh what's the next puzzle right so very, very puzzle heavy. Um, Matt York says Madison's still coming out this week. Yeah, 29th. Uh, somebody, so, uh, did that get it? Did that get delayed to the 29th at some point? Because yeah, yeah it okay. was supposed to be the 20th, I think, or 21st. Okay, because uh, I, I don't know, I don't know where that came from. It's been on our release calendar. It's been the 29th for like I swear a couple months. Um, and so, uh, and so, my apologies to I anyone. I think it was just. It was just while we were getting ready for packs, so it, it kind of got like announced during that time. Oh, like I said, I had I hadn't updated it on our release calendar, and then I checked. You know, somebody said, "Oh, did, it got delayed to the 29th," and I checked our release calendar, and I was like, "No, it's the 29th. It's still the 29th." <laughs> so I don't know when it got when it got pushed back again, but um, it seems 
I don't know. It, or maybe there's just some miscommunication at some point because I didn't hear about any delay. And, I mean, uh, it could still get delayed too. So <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. Four day, four days from now. What's uh? So it, so it's supposed to come out this Friday. Man, what a Overdark and Madison, uh, and Happy Funland, all in the same week span of time. Not yeah, bad, uh, Happy Fun Land was kind of a miss. Um, this one, the jury's still out on it. I, I like it so far. Like, at, at the very least, this seems just like a solid, competent game. Just maybe not anything like that's going to blow you away, yeah. um, but just like decent. Uh, Madison, however, I'm. I'm all in on this one. I've been looking forward to this one for a while. Uh, I'm ready to crap myself uh, and be hor like terrified and be super scared playing something. And uh, Madison, I am uh, d is definitely my most anticipated uh, game of the week here. Matt asked if we had a review copy for Madison. We do not. Um, not yet, anyone no. who's played it so far either was either playing a Steam demo uh, or Steam copy uh, or. Um, or they had PS5 dev kits dropped off, uh, which was only a couple people in the UK. Um, listen, <laughs> Perfect dropped one off for me uh, at one point for VR Skater, and they ended up getting like this three-minute video out of me. They traveled all the way to the States to drop it off, to let me play it just like a couple weeks early, um, and, uh, and, and that video got almost no views. So it's like it's really not worth it for burp to be yeah. flying over here to drop anything off uh for me to play something like you know essentially a week or two early uh, i have no desire for them to do that and uh and i'm sure they no longer have a desire to do that either so uh but yeah we'll uh we'll definitely be covering that that's that's big fucking news man madison vr is something that we've all been very very excited for for a very long time for sure yes aj how Brain. many how many percentages do you have left you started at 30%. I, I think I've actually gone up a little bit. It I always think, happens. I think the restorative power of uh, Gamescast Live, like I'm, I'm feeling like a solid 45% as opposed to 30. So yeah. we're growing up. We're on the up and up here, man. Nice. Maybe I'm just drinking lots of water and hydrating. And I'm, I'm just drinking lots of coffee and <laughs> caffeinating. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um. All right, man. Well, you know what? I think we should do some 20 questions, call it a day, and uh, and, and, and let me get back to work and let you do whatever the fuck it is you do over there. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm actually going to, um, like I said, I need details. to go over. I need to go. Oh, God, I want to so bad, but I could not. I don't have the uh, physical ability to right now. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to be uh, working on some some videos uh, probably tonight, um, working on some stuff for tomorrow. Uh, that I'd like to get posted. I'd like to post my Legendary Tales uh, developer interview tomorrow. I think that's the first time I've ever done that on my channel, um, at least in this fashion. Um, and uh, I want to make sure it's good, so I, I want to polish it up. But I, I want to go over some things with you that, uh, some things about that with you first. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, tomorrow, this is my last day of vacation. So tomorrow it's back to my actual other job um but hopefully throughout the week we'll get uh madison keys at some point my brother's also going to be visiting uh tomorrow as well i haven't seen him in like four years um so might be a little tight up with that um uh, but in the meantime i'm gonna try and get some uh, wait did you say you haven't seen your brother in four years uh in person oh no i i did see him i haven't seen uh his, his kids or his wife uh my, my sister-in-law you have multiple uh, brothers it, it, no oh yeah i have two brothers okay. yes that's correct it's all it's um, all making sense now <laughs> yeah, so we got some family matters to attend to uh, th this week, but uh, hopefully we'll have some uh, edited awesome packs content for you guys. Got did some, uh, I think some some twenty questions with Looper or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lots, uh, lots of good shit to look forward to. Loop, Looper is our yeah. resident twenty questions expert and keeper of twenty questions, and uh, and he seems to always know the answer. So we wanted to put him on the spot, and the four of us played against him. Uh, he was doing 20 questions at the hotel and we got that on yeah. on camera. So we'll be sharing all that. AJ, let's do a little bit of 20 questions and wrap this sucker up. It's all, all right. It's almost a two hour show. I'm um, with you. Uh, you guys, you know how this works, guys. I've only got six minutes and 20 yes, no questions. Figure out what game AJ is thinking of, PSVR 1 or PSVR 2. Uh, so make sure you guys help out in the chat. Suggest good questions for me to ask and based on the answers that we get, suggest good games that it might be. So... Let's do this on your mark. Get does go. Uh, is this game on PSVR 2? This game is 
On PSVR 2, Brian. Was it also on PSVR 1? This game is on PSVR 1 as well, Brian. Okay, both both headsets. That's awesome. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, man, did this... Uh, did the PSVR 2 version launch on the PSVR 2 launch day? Did it release simultaneously with PSVR 2? Uh, oh, I got it real quick. Excuse me. Oh, um, it's yeah, dropped I think down it to did. 12%. <laughs> you, think it, you think it did? Um, I, I, I believe this was a launch day game. I'm pretty sure. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Pixel Rift was not a launch day game, uh, Rye Pop. I think that's just late. Um, yeah, uh, Bambino Remus is asking if it has melee weapons. Um, yeah, yeah, it's got melee weapons in it somewhere. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, is this... I, I need to get Swordsman out of the way here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was at launch. Is, was it? Is this like an, an arena fighter? Um, it has some arena fighter like elements, but I would say no. Okay, so not Swordsman. Um, arena That's five. Elements. Okay. Man. Can't be song in the smoke. Definitely not arena like elements in that. It's just regular ass fighting. Why not, dude? You, the answer to if it was song in the smoke, the answer to is it an arena fighter? The answer would be no, absolutely not. Not. I think not, it could be. AJ, is this is this uh, is this a rekindled version of a PSVR one game? This is. I mean. Jesus it's kind of a rekindled fucking version of a PSVR one game because it's a you know it was on PSVR one as well, but um, but it's not Song in the Smoke, Brian. You make my brain hurt, AJ. <laughs> I'm putting up my feet. It's not Song. Oh, those things are nasty. <laughs> they're, they're not nasty. They're just blurry. What's what, what's that yellow? What's that yellow splotchy stuff on there? I don't, block, I don't know. The, the, yeah, they I might be green. I don't know. I don't know. I might be dying. Just rock setting in from the ground up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is this is this is this multiplayer? Uh, this game's not multiplayer. Okay. Okay. But it might feature. Is it third person? Um, part of it's third person. Are you? A, do you control a mouse? You might control a mouse, yes. You might or you do. Stop you fucking do the, fucking around. <laughs> is, is this game is this game a sequel? Um Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't okay. I got nothing here. That's ten. <laughs> is this my <laughs> book two? This game is in fact Moss Book Two, Brian, uh did which did release uh at launch. With uh, no upgrade, <laughs> um, True. I absolutely love this game. Though I love the Moss series, I think the 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 remaster is really good. Um, yeah, uh, I'm I'm proud of getting you uh, to ten questions on this. I tried to AJ it the most I could, and uh, I actually saw Brandon VR. Shout out to Brandon who was there at the GameCat meetup. Uh, was the first person I like to. Two guesses in. Like as soon as he said uh, uh, it was on PSVR one and PSVR two, he guessed Moss, and he was correct. So really, I don't want to give you the credit, Brian. I want to give the credit to uh, to Brandon VR. Well, we're certainly not giving you any of the credit, AJ. You tried your best <laughs> to not answer this question. It's fucking trying to make me think it, it might be Song of, in the Smoke it, running down the it, clock. It, Jesus it, Christ! It's okay. got some arena qu combat qualities to it. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it, it, you, it, you, they, why do you why do you forget that you're supposed to be helping room. me get to the answer? <laughs> any any I'm not supposed to be state, you. Yes, you are. With, with the the answer is supposed to be. It is. It is. You're supposed <laughs> to be helping me thing. get to the answer, and instead you're pushing me away from it. Why do you? You already have like 400 people in the chat to help you. Why do you need my help too, Brian? How much help do we need to give you? <laughs> I, I will remember this next Monday. <laughs> 
What? It's Moss. It's so easy, man. Come on. I, I'll be a little bit more straight shooter with, with the harder ones. Bambino Ramos with the $5 tip says, love you guys. Tried. Oh, tired <laughs> and recovering. Sorry. Definitely dyslexic. Lead. It's not even yeah. a joke anymore. Every time, every time thing I read is just fucking all messed up. Uh, tired and recovering from PAX, but so happy to have met you. This was the best few days I've had in years and something I truly needed. Um, I agree. I agree. This is something I truly <laughs> needed too. And, uh, yeah. and I was so happy to meet everybody, man. So happy. Yeah. Yeah. This was a wonderful, magical experience. Uh, Violator, the game cat metal Messiah with the level two membership says, glad everyone had a great time at PAX East. And then he follows it up with a $10 tip and says, also great show as usual. Great tip no. as usual, Violator. Thank you. And I got it. to hear uh, Niles Ryan, my metal feline friend's uh, metal band too, which was pretty cool. Oh, wait, how? I didn't even, I, psh, huh? Yeah, he has a metal, he plays a guitar in a metal band, See? which I had no idea either. I think I maybe heard him mention that before. I don't know. I spent but a lot of time with Niles Ryan and I did not find that out about him. Well, I'm sure if he had uh, a My Chemical Romance inspired band, he would have showed you. Probably. Does any does anyone out there have a have an emo band that they're not sharing with us? Because you should be. Maybe you'll be my new favorite band. Fox die infected with the six euros and sixty six cents. Says awesome show, guys. Looking forward to the packs footage. Yeah, guys. In the meantime, don't forget to go join our Discord uh, and check out everything that was uploaded over there. You get some pictures. Um, like I listen, I look fucking terrible. <laughs> like that's that's the one thing I got from all those pictures. I was like, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. You look How are we terrible? so unphotogenic? <laughs> Awful. I'm like, everyone looks great. We look like shit. Yeah, it's true. I, it, I swear it, I look better in person. <laughs> I, 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 I don't. Maybe. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's all lies, man. This right here, this is like, this is camera trickery and filters and all sorts of shit. It's all about the lighting. Uh, which is yeah. also terrible. No, yeah, um, terrible but fighting. no, no. It, but it was time for me to put um, all of that insecurity aside um, about about everything that I've been so you know in my own head about, and you know, and get out there and and and, and realize that no one fucking cares. That that I'm the only one that cares about that. Um, you guys care so much about us, and that means the world to me. Thank you again, everybody. We love you so much. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Okay, well, then, guys, thank you. Camp, right? <laughs> no. guys, thank you, everybody, so much. Uh, not, you know, uh, we'll start with the people who went to PAX, with the, but then we're going to follow up with the people who support the channel. Uh, dude, the moderators are fucking incredible. Thank you so much for keeping uh, the shit from b burning down in my absence. Really appreciate it. Discord has been is running great. Everything's running great. Um, th thank you, everybody. Uh, pack, uh, can't speak anymore. I think I'm at 12%. Um, Patreon supporters, YouTube members, uh, everybody who tips during the show, everybody who shoots the shit during the show, keeps us entertained while we try to keep you entertained, um, you'd, and everybody who watches the channel. There's a lot of people out there who don't say a goddamn word. We know you're out there. We love you just as much. AJ, now can I cue the cat? I'm going to go enjoy some of these uh, Korean treats that BJ brought us. And cue the motherfucking cat, Brian, because I want to say, see you guys on West Day. It is good to be back. Thank you so much for hanging out today. It was a lovely time, despite coming in feeling uh, completely broken. Um, to James, PSVR2 Addict, uh, Brandon VR, what up, homies? I want to talk to Samson, 143VR, what up, dude? Uh, pleasure meeting both of you fine gentlemen. Uh, Steve underscore Irie, thanks so much. Thumbs up, Matt underscore vegan. Uh, underscore. He says it's actually double underscore. Uh, <laughs> somehow, well, double uh, underscore was already taken. Night. Did he know I was going to say underscore, and then commented that? I think. What you, kind of you always say underscore? Of, Don't you ever listen to yourself? Because no. I Rachel, don't. the Jakey Game Cat. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, hopefully you have a, a day two patch coming for that. Uh, Latin. Oh, dude, Latin's uh, in the chat. What is up, man? It was wonderful meeting you and uh, getting to hang out some extra time uh, in the lobby of the 
Hampton Inn and Boston Cross Point, whatever it's called. It's an amazing Cross place. Five, town. five stars. Cross um, town. Eat some clay chowder. Vargo Soft. <laughs> uh, wear gloves. Magic the Game Cat. Uh, get a windbreaker. Awesome Tatum. Time to play VR. Melkaya the Soul Reaving Game Cat. Um, time to play. Is anyone up for some forever pool after the show? Uh, Bambino Ramos, my dude. Shout out to you and your brother, man. And thank you for driving me and Tiffany uh, and Julia and your brother uh, back home safely. Uh, one of the PAX nights. Ryan McCatfrey. Um, <laughs> What is up, man? Good to see you. Nick Mulo, the game cat. Hello. He says, addict. I don't know, man. I was reading that really fast. Fofi Ramos. Oh, Fofi in the house tonight. What up, homie? That's, uh, of course, Bebino Ramos, brother. We got Fofi Ramos in the house as well. And he's got, is that a luchador? Uh, or is that like the tool lateralist guy? I can't tell. It's so small on the screen. Um, Elvert. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, man. Glad, glad you did. You make it back home yet, or is he still traveling? Oh, very. Uh, he he is yeah. part way home. He he I part think way he, home, man. Yeah, I think I think he uh, he, he took a break. Um, because it was. I think he said it would have been like a thirteen hour drive, not if he drove uh, nonstop. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think no. he is probably at a hotel somewhere. So German, so rest up, buddy. Riff, German Rifter in the house tonight. What is up, my friend? Good to see you. Um, another positive impact on the VR community. So. Uh, keep spreading that VR love, my friend. Shapeshifter, the amorphous game cat. Thank you so much. Scott Dracula uh, says, off to VR land. Thanks for the show. Go rest. Thank you, man. Go enjoy your VR land. Um, I need a game called VR land. Why, how come nobody has made a game called VR land, Brian? That seems like such an easy success story right there in the making. Um, et dot two k nine dot now heart heart. Uh, Alahembe the cat allergic game cat. Thank you so much. Has already started saving for next year. Yeah, man, me too. Uh, if, if one thing I learned is that we're gonna need to start saving now, but it's gonna be one hundred percent worth it. Uh, Markio the sleepless night underground game cat. Thanks, homie. We were talking about you, Markio. Uh, I was talking about you, Bambino and uh, Atmos. Um. We were just talking about our uh, reminiscing our great times in Zenith, The Last City, which uh, that game is not looking so hot right now. Um, it seems like they tried to revive it, but it's, uh, I don't know. Let me know. Maybe maybe you know something more than I know. Uh, how's Zenith doing? Are they, are they going to make it? Um, Matthew Scatterly, cheers, my friend. Flippy Nuggets, uh, VR Break, Dune 2, MS-DOS version. Um, 30 years ago, flashbacks. <laughs> Silver Nexus says it's called The Matrix. <laughs> Magic the Game Cat. Hey, says it's Saints and Sinners time. Hell yeah, that's a good game. Oh, I finally got my chainsaw, too. I did my show and tell, and I forgot to show you the chainsaw I got. Damn it. Next time. Next time. Living Legend, thank you so much, man. Y'all have a wonderful night. Uh, PAX was an amazing experience, and I uh, appreciate each and every one of you that uh you know supported us going that came out there and uh had a uh, had a great time overall and just continue to support us man but brian now uh, comes oh oh uh, sorry a very very important part of the show for uh -huh, me. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. so you want to see what was happening in uh, without parole history on march 30 march march 25th uh 2022 or do you want to see what was happening in without parole history on march 25th 2021. Let's go 2021. Yeah, let's go as far back as we can. Here we go. Could Boss. border... Boss. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. We were, uh -oh. so, we were so optimistic. March 25th, 2021. The headline is, Could Borderlands 3, Boneworks, and Half-Life Alex be coming to PSVR 2? First and foremost, oh, Jesus. this was... I think we said yes to all this. <laughs> right? This was... This was we, this was two years, almost two years before PSVR two even came out. Jesus. I, okay, so we were we were scraping the bottom of the barrel. We were asking lots of questions about shit hey, that wasn't even relevant for quite a while. We were right about Resident Evil Village, and we were right about Gran Turismo Seven. So, well, when you we, when you say all when you say everything's coming to VR, you're going to be right here and there. Um, that is true. <laughs> which, but which one of these are we actually surprised about, dude? Like, I mean, Half Life Alex seemed like a no brainer. Uh, 
Boneworks yeah. definitely seemed like a new no brainer after um after, oh, Brian. De after the developers talked about, you know, the, the controllers and said that um you know that, that 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 they would port the game if it had decent controllers well, and we well, do have I've decent controllers. I've got news for you, Buster. Mm -hmm. PSVR2 is getting PC support and from all the information that has been popping no one, up for no one, no one the wants to play VR PC guys. games. No one wants to play PC games. I know, I know, but it's still it's we, we weren't wrong. Is all I'm saying. We weren't wrong technically. <laughs> could 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 Borderlands Three, Boneworks, and Half Life Alex be come play, to PSVR be two played on PSVR two? I guess. Uh, yeah, we. It doesn't say PS five. Okay. It says PSVR two. We win. That's true. Checkmate. Yeah. Horrible, horrible, <laughs> horrible. Uh, all this shit better come to PSVR 2 or I, I resign. I, I won't say when I resign, just eventually. I honestly don't care if either one of those doesn't, but I know a lot of people would like those. Yeah, no, Bo no, Boneworks is a big surprise, man. Boneworks, Bone Labs, those, that should definitely be there. Uh, Half-Life Alex would have been a, would, would have been a great get. Uh, and Borderlands 3, just like, you know, I just, I don't know, Borderlands 2 was pretty fucking cool in VR. So uh, it's, I, I'm, I'm actually, I will say, here we are, a year in. I'm legitimately surprised that we haven't heard word of any of these three. Um, and so I feel like this headline could be published today. And we'd have a very good conversation about it. And I would still be very optimistic that any of these three could happen. They are happening, Brian. It's all happening. <laughs> it's all, it's happening. Excellent. Uh, all right, man, let's get out of here. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We're, we're happy to be back and we got great games to play. We love you all.